In today's video, we're going to go over some creepy TikTok conspiracies. Let's get into it. It turns out the tree huggers were right. I love that it used to be a diss for like people that were hippies, right? Where it's like, oh, they're tree huggers. But now science is starting to show that hugging trees actually reduces levels of cortisol, which is highly connected to stress and reduces blood pressure. Not only that, but it increases oxytocin as well, which is the same hormone that your body produces during moments of intimacy or emotional bonding. This dude's pretty awesome. He's called the hug doctor, and he recommends that every day you need a minimum of 21 seconds, either hugging a person or hugging a tree. And I know, I know all of us have had experiences where you're out in nature, you're amongst the trees and something feels different. The trees literally recharge you. The Japanese actually call this Shinrin Yoku. It means forest bathing. Go look it up. It, the statistics, the data is amazing. Everything is energy that doesn't stop with us. Trees will literally take your negative energy and replace it with positive energy. But listen to this. Did you know there's evidence that trees live in a constant state of like symbiosis? They communicate through their root system. This is possible due to something called mycelium that connects the trees. There's this massive neural network that happens underground. And trees will communicate with one another. If one tree needs nutrients, water, whatever it is, if it's under attack from insects, the other trees through the mycelium network will give the resources needed to make sure the other tree is healthy. They share resources, they share nutrients, they share whatever is needed to make sure that all trees can survive. It is a real thing. I think hugging a tree will make you feel better, along with being more connected with nature in general. Like, keep your bare feet on the ground, in the dirt. It'll make you feel better. If you're not feeling well, put your bare feet into the grass and you will start feeling better. Now, make sure there's no ants and thorns and stuff, but other than that, it will make you feel better. Do any of you have any of this kind of reaction to nature? when it comes to hugging trees, walking barefoot in the grass, things like that. Let me know in the comments. I don't argue with people no more, man. I don't argue with nobody, bro. I just don't. And let me tell you something. The reason why I don't argue with people, you ever been in an argument with somebody and it is clear cut and dry that they are wrong, they are incorrect, and the thing that they said to you, they shouldn't have said, the thing that they did, they shouldn't have done, and they owe you an apology at the end of the day, but they flip it and reverse it, and bring up some old stuff you did. And now all of a sudden, this whole big scenario you got going on is your fault. They have clearly done you wrong, clearly did wrong, clearly made you feel a certain way based off their actions, irrefutably wrong in this situation. And they flip it on you to make you feel bad and make you feel like it's your fault. An argument at the end of the day is supposed to be progressive. We're supposed to have a dialogue. What happened? Why did it happen? How can we avoid it happening again? And if an apology needs to be said, it is said and done right then and there. People are too ignorant to see things from other people's perspective. And that, that is the downfall of relationships is that people lack basic communication skills. That's why I don't argue with people no more, bro. Their perspectives are too jaded and they're too ignorant and full of themselves to understand that they could be wrong. They might be wrong. They need to have a dialogue to understand what the problem actually is. And then they need to have a solution because an argument without a solution is a pointless conversation, bro. I try to tend not to argue as well. I always listen to input. I always listen to other people's perspectives. And it does seem like a lot of my perspectives get overlooked, which is totally fine. I'm not going to argue with the situation. But it does seem to happen more and more as time progresses. You get a black square, a red square, a blue square. What the fuck? Yo, you know what I'm talking about though, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, I know exactly. Yeah. You know what those mean? Theory goes yeah. that the elites or the people that know the code uh -huh. stay away from certain colors of the two faces. So it's like, it's like, if you know, you know, yeah. the code is if you have, if you have the green on your toothpaste, yeah. it means it's all natural. If you have the blue, it says it has natural plus medicine. Okay. If it has red, it's natural with chemical yeah. and if it has black. It's more no. chemical. I don't know if this theory is true or not, but it's definitely something to look into. I, I would definitely have no doubt that there's probably elites out there that have a certain way of viewing things that other companies make for people to have that certain hidden knowledge, I guess. 
It, it's an interesting theory. I don't know if it's necessarily true or not. I've not heard of it before now. So let me know if you know of anything like this that has different color meanings to maybe a higher power that knows a little bit more of what's going on behind the scenes. I'm saying this man is actually Elvis Presley. Here's 10 signs Bob Joyce could potentially be Elvis Presley. Reason one. And Bob Joyce was supposedly spotted attending Elvis Presley's daughter's private funeral. Reason two, the identical facial features of Elvis Presley and Bob Joyce. Reason three, he once accidentally referred to himself as Elvis, but quickly brushed it off like he was stuttering. Reason four, they are both very religious people. Reason five, Bob has the exact same tooth gap that Elvis had when he was young before wearing a tooth cap. Reason six, he sounds exactly like Elvis Presley when singing. Reason 7. Bob Joyce has been said to be seen with one of Elvis Presley's first ever girlfriends. Reason 8. There's not a single photo of him until years after Elvis passed away. Reason 9. He was supposedly spotted at Elvis Presley's home Graceland on Christmas night. Reason 10. He's denied it, but in a very weird way by saying simply, I'm Bob Joyce and I always will be. I don't know. I've never heard of this conspiracy before. I see a little bit of the resemblance. But looking up how old Elvis would be today, he would be like 89 or 90 years old, somewhere in that, that range. And that individual, the Bob Joyce, does not look at all like he's 90 years old. He's doing very well for himself if he is. But I don't know. I don't really see the resemblance that much. Maybe a little bit, but maybe he's just a super fan of Elvis. There's a lot of different impersonators out there that try to dress like Elvis, so he could just be a huge fan. <laughs> So let's take a look at this strange fellow. This here is Pope Benedict, predecessor to the current Pope, Pope Francis. They say the eyes is the window to the soul. Well, what's that tell you? And what's this strange character on this strange fellow here? I mean, this one's a no-brainer, common sense. If it looks like Satan, it smells like Satan, it is Satan. I don't know. I'll let you guys tell it. I don't know, but Pope Benedict does look extremely sinister. I, I've always thought all the popes, popes, I've always thought all the popes had a really dark presence or essence about them. They just look extremely sinister to me, but maybe I'm just being too judgmental. Hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. I only ask once per video and I make a video like this almost every day. And if you see this graph here, we've improved even further since the last time you've seen it. 19% of the viewers that watch my videos are actually subscribed, but we're still at 80% plus of the viewers that are watching my videos. They're not subscribed, but they keep coming back for more of my content. So to the 19% that are subscribed, thank you so much. Fight. And that Tommy Fury fight yeah. really showed that. Goes to a split decision against a legit undefeated boxer. The one thing he doesn't want to do is fight Mike. No. He wants to fight Mike, I think. Why? I don't give a fuck if he's 55. That's still Mike Tyson. Hey, Mike's in good shape, too. He trains with Rafael Cordero. When you see him holding the mitts for Tyson, and Tyson smashing the mitts, yeah. like, Jesus, yeah. that guy will hurt yeah. you. Yeah. I am not a big sports fan. I don't really watch football. I don't really watch wrestling that much but this fight when this happens i'm definitely probably going to watch it because i am extremely interested to see how this fight goes i, I truly do not think that jake paul stands a chance against mike tyson i know mike tyson's up there in age but just watching him train with the boxers and everything it's just extremely aggressive mike tyson is extremely aggressive and hard hitting so it's going to be an interesting fight let's go ahead now if any of you are interested in this fight that's going to happen i'm not sure exactly when it is who do you think is going to win jake paul or mike tyson i personally think it's going to be mike tyson i don't think jake paul stands a chance if jake paul wins i think the game is rigged i really it depends on how the fight goes but i i think the, the fight might be rigged if, if jake paul wins what if the antichrist rather than being a figure of destruction was actually a time traveler Instead of being cast down to walk the earth for eternity, perhaps Lucifer's fall was not a punishment but a mission. A mission to escape from the fiery death of earth back in time to the cradle of humanity. He's cursed with the daunting task of ensuring that everything happens exactly the same. If he's not successful, the light of mankind would be extinguished forever. And then there's the prophecy that the Antichrist destroys all religions of the world. 
Traditional interpretations suggest persecution, but could it be something else entirely? Could it be a scientific discovery that shatters the foundations of our faiths? A revelation that our Antichrist, rather than fulfilling a demonic prophecy, is unveiling a truth that the Church has kept hidden. The Church has given us one narrative, one perspective. But are we not entitled to hear the other side of the story? This might not necessarily go towards the Antichrist, but it's an interesting theory that came to mind while watching this. What if Satan is a time traveler? What if we lived on this planet for so long, we've already been here and done this, but in a different way before Satan traveled back through time? What if we lived how Adam and Eve lived before the bite of the apple? What if Satan went back in time to convince Eve to bite the apple because he's seen how the future was going to unfold because he'd been through it? That's a pretty interesting concept and a theory, I think, but more than likely not the case. But a pretty interesting theory nonetheless, in my opinion. No, a little while ago, the world was running out of glitter. There just, there, there wasn't any glitter. And everybody's like, why isn't there any glitter? Just make the glitter. And people started actually asking questions. So some people went into a deep dive and they got on a confidential phone call with one of the top like manufacturer people, somebody in there, it's confidential, so we don't know who it is, but there was on a phone call. And in this phone call, they said, they don't want us to know it is glitter. What, what is glitter? And of course that made everybody be like, okay, so now we gotta figure this out. And there was a bunch of theories from like boat paint to like stuff in food and everything like that, but that wouldn't make sense to why the world is, there, there just was no glitter. And then somebody figured it out. It wasn't about something that was made out of glitter. It was that something is glitter and they don't want us to know that it is glitter. Glitter is defined as tiny pieces of sparkling material. So that's actually way more broad than we think, because we think of like the plastic glitter, or maybe like the edible glitter, right? No, glitter can be anything like metal or what the truth is, fiberglass. There are only a few glitter manufacturers in the world because it takes like these heavy machinery because you know they have to cut out these tiny, tiny little things. So what was really happening wasn't that somebody was buying up all the craft glitter. No, the machinery was being used to make fiberglass for the American military. So it wasn't that there wasn't enough glitter, there wasn't enough machinery to make both. So why the fuck is the American military buying up all this fiberglass? Apparently, they use it and drop it in areas that have radars, and it tricks the radars into thinking that there's heavy weather. So the mystery is over. It was never about somebody buying up all the glitter. It was that something was glitter that they didn't want us to know was glitter. Fiberglass. This is a pretty interesting theory. I have also thought that glitter was extremely toxic for you. I know a few years ago, back when the glitter boom was really big, we worked at this one job where they just had glitter parties. And basically what that was is there would be glitter sprinkled on the desks and things like that. And you would blow your nose later on that day and you would be blowing out glitter basically because there was just so much glitter everywhere because everything was made with glitter basically. And I feel like that probably wasn't good for you. There was probably a lot of people that were getting sick from it because it is a form of microplastic or small metals, things like that, that gets into the system and then it, it just starts harming your body. I also believe that probably what happens is there's use in the military that could utilize glitter or glitter substances. I don't necessarily believe it's a stone or anything. I think it's microplastics and different micro metals. And that's what they're using to seed the sky with. They, they use forms of glitter to help deflect sun rays and to help, and to help hide from radar sensors. So I think there's all different kinds of ways and reasons why glitter has kind of disappeared. It's not gone. You can still get glitter pretty much at any craft store or any store for that case, but the abundance of it has definitely depleted, that's for sure. And I'm not mad about that. UFO, my boy. That's weird. No, it's a UFO, it ain't weird. That's, that's alien shit, fun. look. They going big back and forth. That's they crazy as fuck, B. That's crazy. I can see see it straight through my, my phone. You got it on your shit? Yeah. Oh, 
We're gonna be on TV now. <laughs> We're gonna be on TV now. <laughs> Look. That's just a UFO up there fucking around. Look, he's gonna be like, oh, I'm gonna turn real fast. Watch. That's crazy. What the fuck, B? Crazy. No, it's all the way back there. To me, this could be classified as a UFO because it's an unidentified flying object. I don't think it's a UAP. I think, to be honest, that's a drone. I'm not 100% sure. The video is not clear enough to quite tell, but that looked very drone-like to me. What is your thoughts on this? Do you think that was a UFO? You think that was a drone? What do you think that was? Because honestly, I can't tell but to me, it does look like a drone. What? Luna, greet. Greet. Dang, that's gotta be extremely a rough life to live when you have schizophrenia so bad that you have in life hallucinations where you think that there's somebody there talking to you but there's nobody there at all it's really smart to have a a service dog or a special animal that can help confirm whether or not something is there or not the biggest problem though is what if the dog wasn't real <laughs> you know like what if you're hallucinating that the dog is there and you're also hallucinating that someone's over there talking to you when you tell the uh, hallucination of a dog that you see to go greet them it goes and greets them and th th now your whole world's just messed up i just realized that this tuesday is going to be four years since the official start of the pandemic that was four years ago i don't know if it's just me because i'm an overthinker and i process things differently whatever but i can't fathom that four years have passed and nothing has felt the same. I think everything has changed. In 2019, I had so much hope. I was excited. My kids were were older and I was starting like the second chapter of my like, life. I wanted to take a photography class. Um, I was excited. I was planning some trips with my girlfriends. And, you know, I joined the gym. I had just joined the gym. So I was like all excited about like, I was so pumped. For 2020, I volunteered for the, this seacoast organization where I was cleaning up beaches. And I was like, I felt really good about myself and social and wanting to put myself out there. But something happened to me during the pandemic that I don't want to be um, around people. I don't have motivation to do anything. I feel like I'm just, I'm just like, floating in space. I don't miss my office. Um, even though when I was in the office, I could do things after work because I had that momentum. I was already dressed and I had makeup on and I was out. Now I get out of work and I close my computer and I, I go from my office to the couch. I don't want to do anything. I don't want to see people. I don't want to, I'm not striving for anything. Um, I have no motivation and and I feel, I don't feel depressed, but I have this sadness inside me. Um, I lost my mother during the pandemic. Um, I lost my stepsister. I had a lot of losses in my life that happened during the pandemic, like we all did. I'm not saying, oh, poor me. I know that we all, people lost jobs. They lost businesses. They lost houses. Um, they lost loved ones. Um, but, but even greater than all those losses is we lost ourselves. Like, I don't know why I'm here. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. Nothing is normal. Nothing has felt normal for me anyway. Right. Some people that, you know, they're, they're back to their corporate job and like life, you know, just moved on. And maybe, maybe that works for them. But for me, I am stuck and I can't get out of it. And this Tuesday is going to be four years since the start of that. And it's just another reminder that I feel stuck and unsocial and not like me. I don't feel like me. Where's my motivation? Where is my purpose? Where is it like, what are we doing? What, what am I supposed to be doing? It definitely does make sense to me personally during the pandemic. It, it didn't affect me as far as my mental state. I, I, I truly think now, did we lose people in my life? Yes, there was definitely some losses due to the pandemic. 
But as far as my motivation and my self-thought and everything pretty much remained the same. I I just truly think that a lot of people that feel like they're still stuck, they had so much time to think for themselves that they pondered too much on life. And they also probably, they probably were also doing a lot of social media just by simply looking through social media and maybe even becoming a part of social media. And that in itself can alter your mentality. It can either bring you down, it can lift you up. There are so many things that factor in to when the pandemic happens. So it's definitely not a crazy idea that someone's mental state diminished during that time because it was a rough time for a lot of people. It's just, it all depends on how you pick yourself up after the fact because the world has changed a little bit but for the most part, it's pretty much the same as it was in 2019. So you can move on and continue about your life how you wanted to then. It just took a while to get there to do so again. How about any of you? Have any of you really suffered anything hard after the pandemic? I, not during the pandemic. Of course, there was a lot of hardship in the pandemic. But do you feel as if a part of you got left behind during that time frame? I'm almost reluctant to do podcasts anymore because I don't understand why we're behaving the way we're behaving. What do you mean when you say we? No one on planet Earth is behaving rationally with respect to physics and UFOs. You have a claim that is being heard at the highest levels in Congress that we've lost control of our airspace. You either clear this thing up in an afternoon or you call in SEAL Team 6. It's like either this is completely crazy and needs to be thrown out or this is absolutely wild and we need to do something about it. We should be able to adjudicate, did we start COVID? But we can't. All of these very simple things we don't adjudicate. Bureau of Labor Statistics claims that the consumer price index is based on a cost of living measure. I claim that's not true. In order for that to be true, you have to take in consumer preference data and you claim that you don't work with consumer preference data. I'm either right or I'm wrong. It's hugely consequential in terms of billions. I claim that the Bureau of Labor Statistics is completely lying, that it's working on a cost of living framework and that the academic responsible for it, a guy named Erwin Dywert, his theory of superlative index numbers is hogwash. That takes an afternoon to adjudicate. There is no possible way. That's a four minute discussion. We are just lying, 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 lying as the substrate of our society. We're lying about physics. We're lying about economics. We're lying about finance. We're lying about coronavirus and biological research. We're lying about monetary aggregates. How many different hills are you waging a war on? There's only one. It's called managed reality. I truly think due to the pandemic in regards to what this individual is saying, we have become more intolerant of facts and lies. We try to debunk facts from lies. We try to see truths in hidden lies. There's a lot that, there's a lot of deeper research we are doing now to start questioning things. Like why would we believe and we can clearly see it everywhere? I mean, simply put, we're just in a time now where we aren't fooled by the facade as easily as we used to be. So when people start questioning or referencing certain technologies, certain events, we have a more understanding and input to the situation, you know? The tithe in the Old Testament law was never once money. Even when the whole last section of tithing was in times where they used money as much as agriculture. It was also always for the Levites or for the poor, right? And that only happened every three years. None of it the people gave went to the temple. I've often wondered this as well. Way back in the day when I used to farm with my grandfather, he would try to donate bales of hay to churches to help people that needed to keep their farm animals either warm during the winter to keep their crops covered, things like that. And the churches would refuse the hay bale and just say, well, sell the hay and provide us with the income from it to help share the wealth. And that never really sat well with my grandfather. So what he ended up doing, he would just help people in need of hay and provide it for them for free because it was a kind gesture of what tithing was supposed to be about. 
And it just makes me see the greed in a lot of churches, to be honest. I get it. It's hard to just accept hay, but they can. They accept food and things like that as well for people. Why can't, why does it have to be money that they're after? I guess is my overall thing. Why can't they just accept the donations of things that do help people aside from money? Because normally when you provide the church money, it doesn't go to anybody in the church. I mean, certain things from the church can help those people, and it's normally the community, the people that are in the churches, but normally when you provide the money to the church, it, they don't go out of their way to provide for the, the poor or for people that really need it. That's a close-up of Joe Biden the other night for the State of the Union. Somebody snapped that, and uh, we're going to sit here and act like, that's Joe Biden. I have never seen a man change so fast. Ball chinian, no ball chinian. Earlobes touch, earlobes hang. I don't get what's going on. Can we close in on the corner of this guy's eye towards his nose? Check this out. I mean, you could fit your whole finger in there. What is going on? It looks like his eye is back, like under layers. Hi, I'm Joe Biden, and today my chin is actually made with latex. That ain't real, son. That was just a few months ago. It looks like someone with a small hand just did a thunder jab but we're going from the upside down mountain range to this smooth as a baby's ass that looks like a fucking fondue on a cake but that's the biden that came out before the speech looking like the guy from fucking poltergeist <laughs> that's uh that's spot on god these teeth aren't as big and gangly as the other ones this whole thing freaks me out. I'm not going to lie to you. It freaks me out. I got more questions than answers. I don't know if that's really supposed to be Joe Biden, because it really doesn't look like Joe Biden. First of all, I remember Joe Biden having blue eyes. This individual has brown eyes. So it's really, I don't think that that's Joe Biden. I don't know. I didn't watch that whole press conference. So I don't know if that's supposed to be Joe Biden or if it's just some other individual. It does kind of resemble Joe Biden. But uh, I don't think that's him. This bit of news I have heard in a long, long time. This is nuts. So a Harvard scientist has just presented evidence in court that could actually be alien spacecraft. Harvard scientist, mate. Now, there's been a lot going on with aliens and space in the last, well, year. We had the planet, which potentially has oxygen on it. Yeah, last year. We then had the little alien babies showing up in court. And we also had NASA pledging to spend more on space travel to actually investigate aliens. Now, this Harvard scientist claims that meteor fragments which were collected by scientists off the ocean floor may actually be of alien origin. How the hell did they get down there? Dr. Loeb told Boston Region Radio it raises the possibility that it may have been a Voyager-like meteor artificially made by another civilization. Now, the meteor in question, dubbed IM-1, plunged into the Pacific near Papua New Guinea nearly a decade ago. Now, it was completely overlooked, no one really even cared about it, until Loeb was doing some research and found it was the first interstellar object to fall to Earth in 2022, and he's been investigating it ever since. Now, of course, after tireless research with him and his team, they say they found things in this sample which literally show it was engineered by some sort of other species, and it's not just like a rock from space. But yeah, I don't know. They're going to keep looking into it, so make sure you hit that follow button, and I'll keep you updated. My biggest question is, did they not disclose what they found in the samples exactly? Like, I, I might have to do a little bit more research on this because I've not heard of this yet. This is my first time hearing about it, and this video was posted a day ago. So I would like to know what they found exactly in that sample of the meteorite. And uh, basically was told to taxi to the very end of the tarmac. And, and like I said, it was middle of the day, very hot. I remember that. We opened the doors and unloaded the equipment that we had brought in. Uh, and then we were met at the aircraft by uh, what we later on called the babysitters. But uh, they kind of introduced themselves and said, hey, no cameras. Uh, nobody's taking pictures here. We're uh, moving some high value stuff. Uh, when the load got there, uh, we're very, of course, uh, curious to see what it was, because that's just the way you are when you're told that you're not allowed to have uh, a camera. Uh, they say this thing had been dead for maybe a day or two, uh, but it stunk. And when I say stunk, I've smelled dead things before, but this had a more of a, I want to say a musky stink, kind of a, not really a decay decay, but more of a, if somebody hadn't taken a shower in like 10 years type of a musty, uh, musky stink is all I can tell you. And it was basically a dead guy. And this guy was extremely large. And when I say large, uh, our pallets are basically, if I remember correctly, about nine by 
12 feet or so. This guy was laying in a fetal position on the pallet. Uh, so he, and he filled the pallet. Uh, we estimated his size at approximately 12 to 10 feet tall. Uh, I did see his skin color. I was expecting somebody of more Arabic descent, uh, being in Afghanistan and all. I know he was dead, but he was very pale, very white. Another thing that, uh, us and the rest of the crew did was we took our feet. We, he was in a fetal position, so you could take your feet and put it kind of, you could see where his feet were there and they were, they were wrapped up. He did not have shoes on, but he'd had like, uh, looked like he was wrapping them in some kind of a canvas type stuff. But we were sticking our feet up next to his feet and his feet were extremely big. We know that the, the standard weight on one of those pallets is uh, about 1500 pounds. And I do remember that the loadmaster did the weights and it was around 1100 pound guy. The pallet sits on dunnage. You know what dunnage is? It's uh, basically like railroad ties so that you can get a forklift underneath it and pick it up. So it was on dunnage, and basic dunnage is like maybe a four by four. And then the pallet is, say, yay thick. It's actually aluminum and balsa wood. And uh, this guy, I mean, laying down was very, very wide. I mean, and he was, like I said, he's in a fetal position. And you go up and just... you hit it. And of course he's under a tarp and all that. I understand that, but he was one dense, he was a dense guy. Uh, we questioned the babysitters of, Hey, where'd you get this guy? And, uh, some of the army guys there with him, uh, relayed to us that, uh, this guy had, I guess, been living up in the mountains, uh, next to a village where the villagers basically treated him like a God. I did infer that they were uh, making sacrifices to this guy because they said he was, they found bones of people. The giant supposedly, like I said, I was not there, supposedly killed the first team that they came across. He was extremely big and fast and agile for a guy that size. They sent up another team, and when the second team went in there to get him, supposedly he had already started to basically eat on the team that uh, that had been killed the first time. They then grabbed a helicopter, and the helicopter brought him down where we picked him up. After we loaded the giant, it was just a standard, uh, standard mission back. We took him all the way back to, uh, El Yudin, Qatar, where he was transloaded onto a, another airplane. I believe it was a C-17. Uh, I was done with my mission then. I got away from it. I was done. I did ask some questions later of, you know, where it might have gone. And as the grapevine goes, it was probably taken back to the United States. And the words I heard were right pat. But again, I don't know. Uh, this was pretty interesting. I've heard of the giants, you know, especially the more authentic giants about having red hair and things like that. This was pretty interesting. I don't know if, what this is from necessarily, if this is from a show or if this was just a media uh, or, or if this was just something that was provided to social media. I would like to know a little bit more where this interview came from. So if any of you have any information on where I could watch this full episode, I would I would be really happy to see it. Say pay it. No, why did you, what'd you say? Why did they pay it? Because that means you have to pay for that. That's not my problem. She's looking at our American Express bill and under charges, it says like pay it. Like you can pay that on your American Express. And she said, why does it say pay it under this? And I'm like, well, so you could pay that. Like you would hit pay it and you pay that. And she said, why does it say that on mine? That's not my responsibility. But like I already bought it. Why would I have to pay for it again? And you're not paying for it again. You're paying because you pay for it on a credit card. But a credit card is like unlimited, right? I'm so confused. Like actually. It's unlimited, but you have to pay that bill. Yes. But I already bought it. No, you're not paying for it twice. You're... Help. I don't get it. That's a whole nother level of privilege right there. I really think that schools need to start teaching children about financial expenses and how credit and everything like that works because, wow. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end the video here. And as always, if you're interested in any of these clips, links are in the description below. And with that being said, have a good day.